How do we design an application that allows user interaction? In Voice and IVR Studio, we use call flow diagrams for this purpose. In this tutorial, we will show you how to create a simple application that allows users to enter a password and have it verified. Here is what the completed call flow diagram will look like. The first element is used by the system to initialize data for an incoming call. The digits element prompts a user to enter their password while listening for numeric input of either a given length or terminated by the pound key. The gray dotted lines represent the transition between a parent element and a child element. The data required to transition to the child element is displayed to the left of the child element transition. The prompt element queries data from its parent element. It then compares the data with its own preset data to determine if the element will be executed or not. Only if the data agrees will it play its prompt and pass the call flow to its child element, which is yet to be created, thus making every child element of the correct password element protected. Since the correct password and wrong password elements share the same parent, their order is determined by their vertical position. In other words, regardless of the number of child elements a parent has, the call will be passed vertically down the list to the first child that either requests the parent condition or is set up to continue on its own. All other subsequent child elements are ignored. The wrong password go to element is set to always true. Every call that is not handled by the correct password element will be handled by the wrong password element. The wrong password element will play the incorrect password dialog and then go to the get password element for retry. For our menu, we would like to accept the input password as soon as the call begins. This makes for a more user-friendly menu rather than forcing the callee to listen to the entire audio prompt. The digits element will work perfectly for this. All elements require that you name them. This element's purpose is to get the password, so we'll name it get password. By default, the digits element requires the callee to enter the pound key to continue. Here we can enter the number of digits that we are expecting to complete the input. The password will be four digits long. Click Next. All elements have the ability to play audio as well as turn text into audio with the voice and text to speech module. This is where we'll create an audio prompt to ask the callee to enter their password. For this demo we'll use text to speech but you could easily record a message using record audio by phone tool in the audio menu and then browse to it. You may have noticed that we never entered exactly what digits will make up our password in the digits element. This is because it is the responsibility of the child element to check the data of the parent element and then determine whether or not to execute. To add a child element to a parent element, the parent element must first be selected. All elements have the ability to check their parent element's data and compare them with a set of conditions before executing. This element will be configured to execute only in the event a correct password is entered. On execution, the element should prompt the user that their password is correct. A simple prompt element will work for this. There are different ways of adding elements. With the Get Password element selected, from the Add Element toolbar, click the Prompt button. Since this element will be set to execute only if the correct password is entered, we'll call it Correct Password. The Transition from Parent Element box is where we set the conditions that determine whether or not the element is executed. Since we are querying the Parent Digits element for touch tone input, in the touch tone key response is box, we enter our expected password. With our test password entered, our element entry condition is in place. Click Next. Now we'll enter the text to speech prompt informing the callee of their correct password entry. The correct password prompt element is now set up. Click Finish. The next element we will add will be for the event of a wrong password entry. It is possible to add an element using the context menu. Right click the Get Password element. Select Add Next element. We need this element to move the call flow back to the Get Password prompt if it is reached. 
the goTo element can do exactly that. Name the goTo element wrong password. It is important to understand the order that elements are interpreted when a parent element has several child elements. The call flow will check the entry condition of the top child element and enter if possible. If the condition does not match, it will proceed down the stack until it succeeds. In this scenario, if the user enters the correct password, the correct password element will take the call and continue to its child element branch. Every other situation will be considered a wrong password and should enter the wrong password element. This being said, every call that enters the wrong password element should continue. Click the Always True radio button. Here we set which element to go to after the element finishes. In this case, we would like to repeat the Get Password dialog. Select Get Password from the list of elements. Now we'll add the Denial of Entry dialog. The element is now complete. Click Finish. Before we can submit our application to the Voice and Gateway, we must first save it and validate it. Now we will validate to check for errors and deploy it to the Gateway. Select Deploy. Select Validate. With the call flow diagram validated, let's deploy it to the Voice and Gateway. Select Submit to Gateway. Don't forget to restart the Voice and Gateway or your application will not work. This concludes the lesson on IVR Studio call flow. In the next lesson, we will discuss variables. We will add to our password app a counter to limit the number of wrong entries allowed before terminating a call.